<coughs> All right. So uh, last thing to talk about is um, just you know applicability. That's a word. Almost sure. Ninety-five percent sure uh, of delta g. So how much can delta g tell us? All right, in sort of real-world scenarios. Um, or what do we need to think about if we want to apply it to a different scenario? So this water in the liquid phase going to water in the gas phase. That is the physical process for water evaporating. All right. And if you calculate delta G for this process, uh, we would get plus 8.59 kilojoules per mole. What does that mean? Non-spontaneous. Non so that uh, means it's not going to happen. But what do we know? Does water evaporate? Yes, water does evaporate. Um, so what's the deal? Well, uh, the problem is, most of the time we're calculating this in our, you know, in general chemistry, we're doing it under standard state conditions, which means 25 degrees Celsius, okay, 25, yeah, that's, that's everyday real life. Uh, concentration of solutions, one molar. We don't have a solution, so we don't have to worry about that. Partial pressure is equal to one atmosphere. Oh, that's different, okay? The partial pressure of water in the gas phase is not um, one atmosphere, okay? And so what we have to do is we're gonna have to calculate delta G at non-standard state conditions. All right, so for, to calculate delta G at non-standard state conditions, all right, you got delta G at standard state conditions, all right, that's not too bad, R, that's the ideal gas constant, and we're going to need it in terms of energy, so we're going to use 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. T, what do we think that means? Temperature, Kelvin. Natural log times Q. Now you've seen uppercase Q before, but we kind of just didn't spend a lot of time on it. That was called our reaction quotient. And we talked about that in equilibrium when we we're discussing equilibrium. Reaction quotient was our equilibrium constant when we're not at equilibrium. So products over reactants, right? So the K, uppercase K, just not at equilibrium. Because we're not at equilibrium. If, in my head. It's a constant. Our ideal, our, so the question was, where did 8.314? Uh, so that's the ideal gas constant in units of joules. And you will find it on your equation sheet because someone has provided it for you. you. You're welcome. All right, so when we're looking at this, okay, so obviously this was K, if it was at equilibrium, products over reactants, but this was waters in liquid phase here, so all that would be would be concentration of water. Of course, we could also put it in terms of partial pressure, and that's what they're doing here. So that's our reaction quotient. So it's not at equilibrium, partial pressure of water. So what are the two things that we have, right? Are the liquid and solid? Liquids and solid. Liquid water and solids. Okay. Just liquid water. All right. So it turns out that if for standard state conditions, the partial pressure of water would be one atmosphere. And it would be non-spontaneous. Water wouldn't evaporate if it was that much water in the gas phase. It just wouldn't go up anymore, okay? Uh, you know, in everyday normal conditions, um, the 
partial pressure of water in the atmosphere is, you know, very, de it's highly dependent on, you know, time of day, geographic location, but on average, uh, you can usually assume that it's partial pressure of water is like something like five times 10 to the negative third atmospheres. So like a milla, five milla atmospheres. And so at that partial pressure, guess what? This equation causes this to be negative. Hey, water evaporates, if you didn't know. Now you know. And knowing's half the battle. I don't know what the other half is. They never told me. Let's try to use that equation on this example. Uh, so uh, we're going to calculate delta G under non-standard state conditions for this reaction. Uh, nitrogen monoxide plus oxygen going to NO2. We've got the standard state delta G, negative 71.2 kilojoules. Now we're just going to need to calculate it under non-standard state conditions. Ah, what happened? All right, so our new handy dandy equation is delta G equals delta G, standard state conditions, plus R T natural log of Q. R is a constant, which for this one, since we're using it in terms of energy, we're going to use the 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. That's what you're given. That's what you usually find if you look up the ideal gas constant with units of energy. The only problem is delta G is in units of kilojoules. So when we add them, we're going to have to make them match. So usually I'm going to have to convert this to uh, kilojoules. So in one kilojoule, there are 1,000 joules. So that's going to be 8.314 times 10 to the negative third kilojoules per mole Kelvin. Nothing changes there. The other thing we're going to have to calculate is Q. Hmm, where do I want to put that? Ah, right here. Hmm. Yeah, sure. I'm going to. Yes, you're right. I'm living life on the edge. Will I make it on this page? Yes. All right, so Q is the same thing as K, right? Just not under equilibrium conditions. So it will be the concentration, or in this case, they're giving us partial pressure, so we can use partial pressures. Partial pressure of the products, NO2 squared, because of the coefficient, right? Divided by partial pressure of NO squared as well, times the partial pressure of oxygen. Not squared. It's not. Yes, you could, absolutely. So you could have converted this to joules and then added them. You would have got your answer in joules. That's fine. Quite legal. All right, so let's plug in our numbers. So we're going to get NO2's two atmospheres squared all over 0 0.1, 0 squared. Mm. Uh, times uh, 0 0.1 as well. Anyways, Q will equal so two squared four divided by point oh one times point one, so point oh oh one. We're dividing that by 0.001, that makes it bigger. So 4,000? 4,000. What are my units? Oh, it kind of looks like it should be 1 over ATM, but remember this is equilibrium constant and it comes out to be unitless. So we don't have any units on Q or K. 
All right, so now I can finally go back in and calculate my delta G under non-standard state conditions. All right, so I got delta G standard state negative 71.2 kilojoules plus the ideal gas constant, which I just converted to kilojoules. per mole Kelvin times temperature, what's my temperature? Um, 298. 298. Mm -hmm. Good. Times the natural log of 4,000. And we get negative 50.7. And my units are going to be kilojoules. Everything else cancels out. Moles cancel out. No. That's it, right? Moles. Well, technically, I mean, you can think of it as kilojoules per mole, but you, we are not going to write it as just because we normally don't because you have to go to the stoichiometry, the coefficients to figure out the per mole basis. So 71.2 kilojoules per mole of oxygen, 71.2 kilojoules per two moles of NO. So that's why we try not to write it unless we're going to need it. All right, so the question that's asked here is actually not just that number. I mean, that number is fine. I like it. We worked hard for it. But the question that is posed here, is this reaction more or less spontaneous? What do you think that means? So it's a question of the energy, all right? So is it more or less spontaneous under these conditions than under standard state conditions? What do we know about the standard state conditions? All we know is that it had a, previously had a delta G of negative 71.2. Now, with these different concentrations, it has a, con or a delta G of negative 50.7. Okay, so obviously it's a different number. But it's still, it's still negative, so it's still spontaneous. But is it more or less spontaneous? Okay, what's good for, spo what, what do, for a spontaneous reaction, what's uh, delta G? Negative. negative. So do you think a more negative number is more spontaneous or a less negative number? More, more spontaneous. So the more negative the value is, the quote unquote more spontaneous it is. So if it's less negative, closer to zero, it would be less spontaneous. And for some reason I wanted to write in cursive. I wanted to feel fancy. A better question would have been, can you get more or less work out of this system? Because remember, that's what delta G was originally meant to do. That's why it's called free energy. How much energy can you get out of this to do work? And so pre at standard state conditions, you can get 71.2 kilojoules to do work. Now you can only get 50.7, less work. It can do less work. <laughs>